Guys, before I dive into this video, subscribe to the damn channel. If you do, you'll get smacked in the face with Oreo cookies raining from the heavens. No, seriously, subscribe and like wake up tomorrow and watch those cookies smack you around a little bit. Maybe get your glass of milk out. It's pretty tasty. So look, in a little over a week from now, this video is probably going to be completely wrong. And I'm just going to look like an idiot. I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. But I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I don't know that you can be a content creator without being willing to take a few L's. And when those L's are more prediction related, I guess they're a little bit easier to take because I'm not misleading you with, you know, incorrect facts and stuff like that or acting like this is a fact. But here's the thing. I always say that when you are creating content, sometimes you need to be risky. You know, it's all about going for it sometimes. It's, it's like this to dating, right? If you never try, you're not going to get anywhere. Say there's a girl or a guy or whatever that you're into, right, that you really, really like, but you never shoot your shot. If you don't shoot your shot, nothing happens, nothing changes, and eventually, uh, if there was any minute interest from this other person, even a, a mild thought in the back of their mind that they might like you more than a friend, you might miss that opportunity if you wait too long. And in this case, we have a timetable on the Game Awards. It happens on December 7th, 6.30 uh, p.m. Central Time. There's probably a pre-show from them at 6 o'clock or something. Bottom line is, if I don't shoot my shot now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the opportunity to do so. And my shot is pretty simple. I think there is a fairly decent chance... I'm not going to guarantee anything. We don't sell guarantees here at Nintendo Prime. That Nintendo Switch 2 and or a major game will be shown off by Nintendo at the Game Awards. And I know it sounds crazy. And for years, I've talked about hyping responsibly. By the way, you can buy some hype responsibly merch down in the description. But here's the thing. I'm done hyping responsibly. I've said this for a little bit now. Haven't really said it in a video. I am done hyping responsibly because one thing i have discovered over the last couple of years of hyping responsibly and tears of the kingdom is really the one that brought me out of my shell and that is that hyping responsibly is boring what's the point of being responsible with your hype so you're not as let down when the thing that you get hyped for doesn't happen the way you want it to. Let's say, as an example, that I get super hyped that Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be revealed December 7th at the Game Awards. And instead, all Nintendo gives us is a new character for Fire Emblem Engage. Now, that's exciting on the surface, but also a magnitude of difference away from getting the Nintendo Switch 2 revealed, right? So, look, I understand that when you overhype for something, it sets you up for disappointment. But I also will say this. When you know you're overhyping, I think in the back of your mind, you're prepared for that disappointment. And that's going to be the key. If I'm going to go ask Yulia out, my fiance, 12 years ago, Right, going to go ask her out. I already know in the back of my mind that she might say no. So because of that, I am mentally prepared for that situation. Now, that's not the way it went, and I was pleasantly surprised. But the point is, when I say Nintendo Switch 2 is going to happen at the Game Awards, or if not that, a major game announcement from Nintendo, I'm already prepared for the reality that this might not happen. So I would say if you're going to be like me and hype irresponsibly, then at least have the idea in the back of your mind that what you're getting hyped about might not happen. Talk about this all the time. We have all these Switch 2 rumors, reports, uh, speculation out there. None of it might be real. Always be prepared for the fact that everything we've been talking about for a year and a half with Switch 2 might not be real. Okay, I am prepared mentally for that, uh, although it will be an interesting discussion if none of it's real. Now, when we talk about the Game Awards, Nintendo has a very long history of reveals at the Game Awards. I know people always ask, like, Nintendo doesn't do anything at the Game Awards. We went over this in a prior video. Nintendo has basically done something every single year. Eight of the last nine years, or really nine of the last ten, if you want to go all the way back to the, what is it, the Spike TV Game Awards or whatever the heck it was Jeff Keighley used to work for. 
Nintendo has revealed something brand new at the Game Awards. Something not known or a new look at something that was a known quantity at the Game Awards. They've done it every single year except 2021. And we all know pandemic and other stuff going on. A little bit understandable why maybe they had nothing big to show at the Game Awards. Now, here's the thing. All these announcements aren't always big ones. Some of them are fairly big. First ever gameplay of Breath of the Wild, Game Awards 2014. Some of them are, well, unknown projects that we didn't know about. Last year, Bayonetta Origins announced at the Game Awards. Brand new. Some of it's just DLC. Fire Emblem Engage, as an example, last year. Last year was actually a pretty good announcement year for Nintendo at the Game Awards. They had two big announcements, and one was DLC for an upcoming game that hadn't come out yet, and one was a brand new game. So, look, Nintendo doesn't always show big. Sometimes it's just a Smash character announcement, and that would maybe be on the smaller end, depending on how hyped you are for that character. But the point is that Nintendo does something at every Game Awards. So we already have an expectation going in that Nintendo's revealing something at the Game Awards. Also, what might help this thought process is Grand Theft Auto, or I should say Rockstar, basically, they didn't technically say Grand Theft Auto, but they teased a big announcement on December 5th, two days before the Game Awards. Chances are that's going to be the big reveal for Grand Theft Auto 6. Now, does that mean Grand Theft Auto 6 won't also have an additional trailer at the Game Awards? No, it doesn't mean that. It could be a tease with a full trailer at the Game Awards. That could happen. But the bottom line is the big reveal will have happened before the Game Awards. Might be a smart move, actually, because then there's less of a chance of it overshadowing everything at the Game Awards like it might have done otherwise. Now, let's get into the prediction section here because I said something big whether it's switch 2 or otherwise let's first talk about Nintendo switch 2 look there's a huge part of me that just wants them to reveal this thing to be confident in revealing it I think that's what a move to reveal switch 2 at the game awards would be it would be a confident move it would be Nintendo saying hey so we have a bunch of games up for awards we are the most nominated company at the game awards just look at all the different games we have up for awards from Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Wonder, right? Those are the two big ones. But don't forget, Pikmin 4 is up for awards. Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp's up for awards. Fire Emblem Engage is up for an award. Look, Nintendo like has everything they put out this year basically up for an award. So Nintendo is the most nominated company at the Game Awards. So how about a confident move in a year where you have two games up for Game of the Year to drop a reveal of what's next from Nintendo? That, to me, just screams, we got this industry by the balls. Look at how awesome we're doing now, and look how awesome we're going to be next year. I think that would be a power move from Nintendo, and honestly, help them reach a much bigger audience with a console that may be more appealing to said audience. This audience is PlayStation gamers and PC gamers and Yes, Nintendo gamers as well, but you get to reach beyond that fan base and be like, hey, you want to play this system. And Because that reveal could have a lot of things. It could have Elden Ring on it, right? It could have Baldur's Gate 3, for crying out loud, on it. So depending how Nintendo would position a reveal of Switch 2, it could really, really capture that Game Awards audience and really help just boost interest in the system heading into next year, especially if it's going to be a first half, first six months system where it's coming out sometime in the first six months. This to me would actually make a lot of sense. So again, realistically, it's probably not going to happen. Nintendo's history is to never reveal systems at these events, not the game awards, not even Nintendo directs. However, if Nintendo wants to flex their muscles, this would be a great time to do it. Now, Continue with our hyping irresponsibly. Let's just presume that's not Nintendo's big announcement, and instead it's something else. Now, we've already talked about Zelda remakes and remasters and what they could show. Look, the only one that's really going to, I think, knock people's socks off would be Ocarina of Time, fully remade from the ground up. Now, look, you're seeing some footage from Rowan Link, who has an excellent Studio Ghibli style of film he's making as well that he put up a preview of that has like a million views. Congrats to him, by the way, for all the media coverage on that. But... I'm not saying it's going to be this Unreal Engine 5 fan remake thing, right? Some of you guys think this fan remake that, he, that he's been slowly working on with Ocarina of Time or Cryzen X does as well. Some of you guys think those Unreal Engine things look incredible. Other people think it's not that great. Look, no matter what, what ever Nintendo would do with an Ocarina of Time from the ground up remake, it's not going to look like those things anyways. 
Again, these are fan projects, and fan projects are going to be limited to what one individual can do with a single engine and whatever assets they can create and or procure from asset shops. So, yeah, there's going to be some limitations with these fan projects, but Nintendo wouldn't have such limitations. So that could be a massive reveal. And if they somehow, and this is the risky part, take Ocarina of Time in a full remake and make an open world, that could actually play into the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom crowd. And I know I hear a lot of you Ocarina of Time fans, they, how dare they do this? Ocarina of Time's already pretty open world. You can already do the dungeons out of order. It involves a little clipping sometimes and some mountains and stuff, but you could technically do some of the dungeons out of order without it really ruining the game experience, and it would still would be separated by that seven-year gap, right? That's still going to be a thing. It can't really be fully open when you have to pull and, you know, yank out a sword. You, know, you have to yank it out and put it in to just change you know, whether you're an adult or a kid. So, uh, again, it still would be separated like that, and Ocarina of Time doesn't need to be reworked that much to actually be open world. And, like, we're not saying add climbing mechanics, and I'm, I'm not going that far. I'm just saying it's not that big of a change, to be completely honest. Ocarina of Time is, like, a stone's throw away from being an open world game. So and let's just give that a little bit of a rest. Now... That being said, what's interesting as well is, you know, we don't expect necessarily Nintendo to do that, but that would be a big announcement that would get Zelda fans really hyped in a year of Zelda. There are other big reveals Nintendo could do. Now, if they just want to satisfy a hardcore Nintendo audience, Metroid Prime 4. That's like just an obvious already announced game. Drop it here like they did Bayonetta three years ago. And you know what? You live with it. We see it. It looks awesome. It gets Nintendo fans really hyped. It looks absolutely incredible because it's probably going to look really damn good next to other AAA games on Nintendo Switch. And it's going to get people hyped for next year. But it's only going to hype that hardcore Nintendo base. Unfortunately, Metroid's never been able to crack the mass appeal but then again, what if this is the one to do it? What if this does crack the mass appeal barrier and this is therefore the perfect place to reveal Metroid Prime 4? Again, how it does it, whether it's open world. And I know we keep talking open world, but for some reason, open world has a really big mass appeal. So whether it's that, uh, whether it's multiplayer modes, I don't know. Maybe it's all of the above. Maybe it's none of it. But if Nintendo thinks this is the mold-breaking Metroid game that's going to bring Metroid to the masses, then uh, maybe they think this is the place to do it, where the masses are actually paying attention. Remember, the Game Awards has a bigger audience watching it from a gaming... Just like people who play video games. There are more people watching the Game Awards than any other gaming event of the year. Anything Sony does, Nintendo does, Microsoft does, even bigger than the E3 streams, the Game Awards have become massive. So yeah, it could be a perfect place to drop this if they think it's going to break the barrier. Now, that's just that's just fun on the surface. Uh, what other things could Nintendo throw out there? Well, naturally, even if they don't show off their next system, they could tease the next 3D Mario and just not put a system in the trailer, right? They don't have to start it off with the, the Nintendo Switch logo. They could just literally do a tease. It could be a 15, 30 second tease of the next big 3D Mario with just like the date at the end, say in 2024. That would get people hyped. Remember, Mario Wonder is up for an award this year. The Mario movie is up for an award. So why not drop a teaser for the next 3D Mario, even if it might be a next gen game? Uh, but we don't have to know that right now. That's the thing. It could be a tease. That leads to the speculation, but then we'll, we'll we'll obviously see what happens when they reveal more of it next year, maybe even at the February Direct. Uh, there's other things Nintendo could drop as well. When you think about the big stuff Nintendo could do, uh, you know, they could announce another fighter pass for Smash Bros. if they really, really want to and then give us the first fighter. I don't really think that's what they're doing since Sakurai's been still continually making those YouTube videos. Uh, they could announce a Kid Icarus Uprising remake as well from the ground up. A lot of people didn't play the original one. A from the ground up remake could look absolutely incredible. We know Sakurai's also been sort of like, hey, we should do this. Hey, we should do this. Maybe it's because they've been doing it the whole time. We don't really know. Uh, and then... We have to think about some other titles Nintendo could drop. When we think about the big things with Nintendo, we're always thinking Pokemon, Mario, and Zelda, Animal Crossing, and Splatoon. Those are like the big five pillars that sell the best for Nintendo, and you can see that in their top sales charts. But honestly, they could do some crazy stuff. What if on the heels 
of that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, you know, dropping not too long ago. What if they drop a tease for the next Mario Kart? It is the most mass appeal franchise Nintendo has. Crosses age groups, crosses generations, crosses fan bases of all platforms. Even PlayStation, Xbox, and PC fans will admit they love playing Mario Kart. It's just fun. What if we get a tease? And again, you would think a lot of this would be saved for the reveal of Switch 2, which is one reason why I give Switch 2 a fighting chance to actually be at the Game Awards. But you know what? Let me know what you think down below. What is your dream scenario for a reveal at the Game Awards? No longer hyping responsibly. We're ripping that away. We're pulling the cord and we're saying it's time to give us your dreams for the Game Awards. We're not being realistic, folks. We're being hyped. And you know what? I am so hyped for the Game Awards on December 7th. Got a little announcement for you guys. We're going to be doing a bit of an event for the Game Awards. So here's what's going to be happening. We're going to be live streaming by at least 2 p.m. Central Time. We might go a couple hours earlier. I'm still mapping out the plans for the stream. During the stream, we're going to have five giveaways. And these are digital giveaways, so games slash eShop gift card. They're going to be stuff that I can legitimately reach into my pocket and hand it to you. There might be more than five giveaways, but hey, uh, we'll, we'll have to just wait and see. You know, I can't give away literally everything that we're planning for the event. Uh, in the event, there's going to be a Zelda trivia showdown between Eric and Nate. That's right. Eric and Nate will be doing a Zelda trivia showdown, and the loser is going to have to spin the Wheel of Death. <laughs> and it's going to be a fully revamped Wheel of Death. And if you don't know what the Wheel of Death is, you're going to find out. Also, we're going to have the Eric and Nate betting special as well, where we actually have a trophy, which was well, technically here. It's over on another table. But we're going to have the betting special as well, where you know the loser, uh, I don't know, gets to wallow their head in shame. We'll figure out something for the loser, but the winner gets a trophy. Uh, so the betting special is going to happen right before the Game Awards begins, where we're going to make our, our predictions on what we think is going to actually win versus what we want to win each and every award. And it'll be worth a certain amount of points for each award. That being said, folks, I am so excited. Hope to catch you guys at that live stream. It's going to be a long day, but a fun one. You guys are awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.